what I got to say, you really don't want to hear, because honesty ain't too high for your people priority list, right? Honesty? You want honesty? Oh, that's what we always want. We want some honesty. This is Tim's New York Giants Trade Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. Want to talk about the defensive coordinator position one last time. Because of the fact that now that the Giants have officially parted ways, and we could have officially parted away with the New York Giants, it's a mutual agreement. We talked about it yesterday. We are going to need a defensive coordinator. And I think this position is going to, this next hire is going to have to be what I like to refer to as a Dable hire. And and I'm not saying this in a bad way, but I think what Dable needs, and I think what Dable needs in the building, because there's, I, again, like you said, what I got to say, you really don't want to hear, because honesty ain't too high up on your people priority list, right? Honesty? You want honesty? I think Dable, in some regards, has a little bit of an issue with people that have strong personalities, um, which is why he gets along so well with Kafka, why Kafka still has a job. He talk about Everyone talks about Wink getting let go after having the 27th-ranked defense. He off, What about the 32nd-ranked offense <laughs> or the 30th-ranked offense for the last two years? Uh, why does Kafka still have a job? Because Kafka is kind of a yes guy. Kafka's a young guy. Kafka's not going to make waves. Kafka's going to probably just pretty much go along and do whatever Dable wants him to do. And, and that's pretty self-evident because he, he is protected like a newborn. We go back two years ago, there were numerous people calling for Kafka to be fired. And then all of a sudden, you know, some, Dable doesn't call the plays, but all of a sudden the offense turns itself around for a game. And then it looks like Kafka calls the plays again. And we go back into the dregs. So with this new position as defensive coordinator, I think it's going to have to be a Dable guy. I think it's going to have to be a guy he's familiar with. I don't think, I think, or maybe an organizational guy that's familiar with the Giants uh, itself. But I do think there seems to, seems to be some connection needed for Dable. And he has to be an amenable guy who is, who is not going to, you know, who's not going to rock the boat. And I think the perfect candidate and it's not a bad candidate, but the perfect candidate, we've talked about it before, is going to be Leslie Frazier. I always remember, you know, everyone talks about Leslie Frazier being the defensive coordinator from the Bills. I always remember him from the Chicago Bears. I, I remember him being on that 85 team. I, I remember that uh, he had, I think he had six interceptions, and he, um, he suffered a knee injury. Um, I, think it was, I think he was returning a punt in the Super Bowl. I don't remember exactly, but I remember he suffered a knee injury. It was in the Super Bowl, uh, and he never played again. And he was just one of those guys that, you know, like I said, he, he, he was a good bear. He was a good player. was a good defensive back started out his career. Well, and everyone wants to talk about how well he did in Buffalo. Everyone's like, he did wonderful in Buffalo. Those, those years that he was a defensive coordinator from 2017 to 2019. And, but the problem is this. Yeah. He had, he's 60. What is he? 64 years old. I think he's about 64 years old and he has, he has a a larger resume than just Buffalo. And he also has a large number of stops on his resume with failed experience as a defensive coordinator. And and that, and that's just life, but you can't just look at the Buffalo days and go, Hey, you know, this is, this is what he did. He he's uh, you know, you know, we, we, we always talk about it. It was great. Huh? Your fastball's up. Your curveball's hanging. The show they would have ripped you. Can't you even let me enjoy the moment? The moment's over. The moment's over for him because, you know, that was Buffalo was a couple years back. But to look at his totality of his career, you got to kind of see where the man has been and what the man has done. Now, his first, if you want to just take a look at him being as a defensive coordinator, his first defensive coordinator, I guess, experience was going to be back in 2003 to 2004 with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, he was under Marvin Lewis. He had the 20, he had the 28th ranked defense for first year. And then he had the 19th ranked defense. And then they basically dismissed him. Marvis, Marvin Lewis, who loves him, got rid of him because he just wasn't the right fit. And the defense wasn't improving enough. Their takeaways, you know, people will talk about how their takeaways went up from 24 to 36 and how they notched 20 interceptions uh, in, um, in 2004, but it just wasn't enough for him to save his job, especially under Marvin Lewis, who was a defensive coach. Then he went over and was hired by uh, Tony Dungy as a defensive assistant in Indianapolis. You know, he was part of, uh, you know, he, he, he was, he was, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't there very long, you know, and like I said, this is, this is going back. Like I said, this is going back a couple of years, but he wasn't there very long. Then he shuffled on over to Minnesota he became the defensive coordinator under, I think it was Brad Childress at the time. 
Um, I know, I know Tomlin was on that staff. So I became the defensive coordinator over there. And, and again, it, it wasn't something that was great. <laughs> I mean, it, he, he, he did not have a wonderful time or experience as a defensive coordinator uh, over there for that one season. He was then moved from defensive coordinator to assistant head coach and defensive coordinator from 2008, 2010. And then he was made interim head coach back in 2010. Uh, he did finish fourth in the coach of the year balloting. Uh, I think he went 10 and six. I forget what year that was, but he did go 10 and six. I know that made the playoffs, uh, but then he got fired in 2013 for going five and 10. So yeah, you know, he has the head coaching experience and people also forget. Then he went over to Tampa as a defensive coordinator in 2014. And the Bucks released him in 2016. He had a terrible, he had a ter- they had a terrible talent in Tampa in 14, uh, excuse me, in those years. And, and in 15, uh, well, 14 was his worst season. I know Tampa went like six and 10 uh, in 14, but they decided not to pick up his option because if you look at those defenses in Tampa, they weren't good at all. You know, and then he went over and was hired by uh, Baltimore Ravens as a secondary coach. And then he was there for a year. And then he went over to the 2017 to be part of the Buffalo's bills organization where, where everyone wants to talk about everyone wants to talk about what he's done, what he did in Buffalo. Okay. But you also have to look at what he did in Tampa, what he did in Minnesota and what he did in Cincinnati. It's, it's a totality of a career. Again, we talked we talk about this before we talk about this with crash Davis. It's moments, you know, the moment is over. It's great that that's what you did a year ago. He took a year off last year. It's great what you did for two seasons in Buffalo, but Buffalo has a different talent level than the New York Giants. And I think that's what we need to look at when we talk about Leslie Frazier. I think Leslie Frazier would be a great pickup for the Giants because, like I said, I don't think he's a guy that's going to rock the boat. I don't think he's a guy that's going to, you know, get in Wink's way. I think he's going to do everything that Wink's that Wink basically says. And I don't have, I don't, you know, you don't, you don't have, you don't have a problem with that. You know, it, it's, it's going to be, he is, he, it, it, I mean, if you'll take a, if you take a look at between Wink and Frazier, totally different mindsets in reference to defense, totally different mindset. Um, do I think it would be a seamless changeover? No, because I think it's, I think the talent that they have on his defense over the last two years was being built for more of a Wink defense. And we're going to talk about the roster on Friday. I'm going to talk about the rooster. We're going to talk about that on Friday. But it, it's, it, it, you know, like I said, he, he is, he's a highly regarded defensive mind. Like I said, everyone's going to go off the two years in Buffalo, and we're going to kind of forget about, you know, Tampa and, you know, and the, and the Bengals and, and Minnesota. We're going, to, we're going to forget about those things. But he, like I said, he is widely considered, you know, a great defensive mind. He is re- he's readily available. He is a guy that Dable has worked with. So he Dable knows him. He is a very soft spoken gentleman. Um, so, I mean, he, he is a guy that, you know, is going to be uh, a good personality to have around the giants. Cause he's, he's not going to rock the boat. That's just the way it is. And th- that's just the kind of guy he is. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But like I said, don't, don't just judge him off of what he did for two years in Buffalo judge him off the totality of his career. And then we always talk about bringing back. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. We t- bring him back Antonio Pierce. If Antonio Pierce was not a giant that helped us, that helped us win the super bowl in seven, 2007, he wouldn't even be on this list. He really wouldn't. He's got one year as a defensive coordinator in, in Arizona. Um, and, and I find it interesting that he left Arizona in, in some, uh, and, and some interesting circumstances because there was some NCA violations, recruiting violations. So he, he left that organization. I mean, he doesn't have the full experience as a defensive coordinator to come in here. And, and, and I think really grasp, I mean, do you really want to handhold another defensive coordinator? And maybe Dable does. And plus he has no connection to Dable. He just has more of a connection to the, um, you know, to the organization itself. Uh, now there was already talk that he would be interested in the vacancy if the Raiders did not bring him back as the head coach. Yeah, he went five and four, second in the and second in the AFC West. Um, you know, some people think that you know he's he's not going to want to take a defense coordinator position. He's going to search for search for that head coaching position, but he doesn't have a lot of head coaching experience either, except for those nine games in 
in, in Vegas. Uh, he, he is a guy that has a pedigree in reference to be a, being a player. But like I said, if you take a look at the totality of his career, it's just, it's just one of those things. If he, if he wasn't a former giant, I don't think he would be on this list. I, I mean, I, I really don't. And that, and that's not a bad thing against Pierce. I'm not saying anything bad against Pierce, but you're looking at a guy that was a linebacker coach for two years at Arizona state, you know, was a, uh, was an assistant defensive coordinator in 20. And then he was a coordinator in 2021. And then he went to the Raiders as a linebacker coach. There, there are people with less of a resume or a pedigree than, than Antonio Pierce. But like I said, Antonio Pierce, as much as you like him and much as you like him for what he did wearing number, you know, wearing number 58 for the giants, you all, you also have to have this, you have to have this little bit of a, uh, uh, weirdness about him. Cause there's, there has been some red flags with him. There was a red, some a couple red flags in college. You go back to the Burroughs incident, uh, about what happened when he shot himself when he was there. I mean, it's, it's just one of those, it's just kind of one of those things that you, you kind of look at him and say, he doesn't have, he doesn't, you know, what it reminds me of uh, Wally Backman, former Mets second baseman, got a job, uh, years back with the Arizona diamondbacks as their head, as their, um, as, as their manager. And then some things came out about Wally in reference to some of the things that he had been doing and some of the other things that have been going on and some financial situations. And they actually rescinded the job offer because they just found that he just wasn't the guy that he thought he was. I'm not saying that's the case with Antonio Pierce, but I don't think the giants are looking to grab a red flag. I don't, I think the giants are looking to make, like I said, make the safest pick that they possibly can because of the situation that, you know, that they, they, they went into. You know, everyone wants to talk about maybe moving up Andre Patterson as well to the uh, to the defensive coordinator position. Uh, I, I, I'm just, you know, Patterson, I think, is, is one of those guys that had, has been in the league forever. I mean, I think he was uh, not in the league. He's been coaching forever. He was. In, well, yeah, he came in the league in 97. So he's been a defensive line coach basically since since 97. He's got numerous stops. Again, people don't want to talk about these things. People want to talk about what he's done for what he's done for Dexter Lawrence. Well, I think Dexter Lawrence also has a little bit of credit. He needs to give it to, uh, to wink as well for being coming the player that he's become. Uh, but this is a guy that, like I said, has never been a defensive coordinator. He's had stops going back to college, Washington state, Cal Poly, new England Patriots, uh, Minnesota Vikings, Dallas Cowboys, Cleveland Browns, Denver Broncos. He then, he then was a defensive offensive line coach in high school, UNLV, UTEP. Yeah. He was FIU. Uh, then with the Minnesota Vikings and, and he'd been with the Minnesota Vikings for a little bit, uh, for a little bit while he was a co-defensive coordinator back then. But this is a guy that's been in the league for an extended period of time who this would really be his true first defensive coordinator position at 63 years old. Again, that's not an option that I think the giants need to go with. And I love the fact that we talk about generating Bobby Johnson because of the fact that he failed the offensive line, but Bobby Johnson, if you have to recall this, we want to, if you want to give credit and praise to Andre Patterson for Dexter Lawrence, you got to give credit and praise for Andrew Thomas for Bobby Johnson. So is it, is it the player and the talent or the coach? Cause they were both pro bowlers, <laughs> not this year. Well, one was this year, but both were last year. So you got to, you got to, you got to look at it that way as well. I think the Giants just need to make the safe pick. They need to go with a guy that's not going to rock the boat. We've said this a million times before. They need, they need some, they need some stability. They need some continuity within, within the organization. They don't need a strong voice or a presence like wink, because I think that just kind of threatens Dable. And I think we just need to look at the, I still just think we need to look at the red flags with Dable a little bit. I really do. I don't, I'm not saying that wink wasn't trying to undermine him. I'm not saying, I'm not saying any of that, but I I'm just saying you knew when you hired him what wink was and he's a strong personality. And I think that Dable just doesn't like that strong personality. And I think he just needs people around him that are going to be amenable to what he wants to do. Kind of like, kind of like yes, men. And hopefully that'll work out for the Giants because we've got to try something different because what we've been trying to do just ain't working out. i uh, got a big show coming up on Friday. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And again, this is Dennis New York Giants. Strength Talk. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Join the way. That'd be awesome.